So fair to say, Ultimate's in a rough spot right now. Kills, okay, yeah, he's still alive, and our sends in play. Oh, no, he's gonna leave. Oh, and the taking box are there. And you! Another ammo! Oh, this is nuts. Oh! Wait, got some tricks, yeah, the up smash. No, oh, the block! No, oh, no, 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 he's done it! Oh, no, is that enough? No way it is! Oh my god, how? How did that work? Oh! It is though. Goodbye! If it's not these two terrorizing a major, regional, monthly, or local, it's this guy or it's some kind of Saudi or Stacy. Let's focus specifically on this guy. If I say Kazuya Mishima and stage in the same sentence, what pops up? <laughs> Probably this stage. Final destination, no plats, big space, nowhere to run, we just fight. And here Kazuya is, charging at you with his invincible zap punch. How do we get here? This shouldn't be happening. Why am I ending up giving my opponent his best stage in a high stakes tournament set? And this was on my counter pick. What is going on here? Pretty simple answer in fact. It all goes back to the rule set. Today, we're gonna take a deep dive into what flaws hold back a rule set from giving both players opportunities to get an edge when it's their turn to ban and pick without the need to be sneaky. Now, regardless of how a rule set works, it always follows a three act structure, the RPS, the striking and the characters. The order those last two come in is the important part as this is where the biggest flaw in rule sets come from. Why stage striking is so vital early in a set is its data collection in a way. See the likes of Smashville, PS2 and Battlefield get banned? You know that they're not very comfortable on platforms. See the likes of Final Destination, Town and City and Kalos get banned? They're probably not comfortable on flat stages. That's important intel. This is stuff that will help you later in a set to maybe get that little edge out of the counter pick. Whether they later forget to ban a stage, or there's another stage you can work out that is similar to those they're uncomfortable on. But let's say our rule set is character first. Then we have access to even more information. Even before the stage bans begin, and my opponent is playing Kazuya, and I'm playing Mario, we can both already start to think of stages that cannot be given, even before I learn what stages they don't like as a player. I can't give any flat stages. One electric and I'm done. They also know if they give me triplats, it's Wahoo City. Pretty valuable info to have, isn't it? So why does stage first exist if it takes away this info? We're creating unnecessary guesswork. The idea in game one is that both players should have the same amount of information to make an informed decision on stage bans. Let's use my example of Kazuya vs Mario again, but this time we will use a stage first rule set. I have lost the RPS, and on this rule set we use five stages to begin with. He gets to ban one first, he bans Battlefield. Field. Makes sense, Mario is quite strong there. But I still don't know who he plays, so I'll get rid of FD because I need my platforms and PS2 because I want to data collect and often PS2 will not give you much info about your opponent due to how neutral of a stage it typically is. I pick Smashville because controlling the middle platform is pretty important and I can still get some good combos here compared to Small Battlefield. Then finally we get to picking characters. He locks in Tarsia. Uh oh. I'm fighting an FGC character on a smaller stage and one platform to escape to. I'm in trouble. And then I get three stocked because he hits his zero to death three times and I barely have any room to breathe. Does this seem fair? I'm given such little information to go off and unless I research my opponents heavily prior to a bracket, I'm gonna get tripped up here. I get punished because I'm forced to guess what my opponent has based on very little prior info and their stage picks. Fortunately, there's a pretty simple fix to this. Let's try to do this again with the same five stages, but this time our rule set is character first. This time I win the RPS. I know he's playing Kazuya and instantly ban Final Destination to avoid scenarios where I get zero to death easily. He bans Battlefield and Pokemon Stadium 2. Seems fair. One is a good Mario stage and the other offers neither player an advantage. I'm left with Smashville, a stage quite strong for FGCs, even if my combos will be stronger than they will be on Small Battlefield, but I choose Small Battlefield because I'm able to weigh up that fighting cars you're on Smashville is a dangerous game. See, with this extra information on characters, I'm not being punished for not knowing what my opponent is hiding from me and vice versa. In a character first rule set, both players are able to make accurate stage strikes by being able to weigh up character strengths on stages as well as player preferences to pick a stage which isn't necessarily benefiting either player. But often, our problems in these rule sets don't stop at game one. Time for a case study on counter picks. Here we have one of the most controversial rule sets post quarantine from Battle of BC4. As we see, there are only six stages and hang on, no bans. This seems dangerous when we learn stages are picked before characters. 
Warriors. We'll be tuning in after game one of Tilde vs T. Tilde has gone up 1-0 in the set, winning Falco Pac-Man on small battlefield. Now due to this tournament running Dave's stupid rule, where players cannot play on the previous stage they won on, small battlefield is not available for game two. So game two, where do we go? Final destination. An interesting choice for the matchup, but hang on. T isn't playing Pac-Man, he's playing Kazia. Well, yeah, he wins game two. Tilde is unable to do anything and is punished by a ferocious counterpick. This extends to tournaments with bans too. Here at Smash Summit 5, Akola has just gone up 2-0 in this set. Myron is preparing his bans, expecting Steve. He has made a fatal flaw. Akola does not just play Steve, he has a Kazia. Final destination is left open, and yep, same result. Should these top players be more prepared and researched on their opponent's full roster? Yeah, probably. But when getting punished on your own counter pick, doesn't this seem like a flaw in the rule set? We can compare this to a rule set with character first. When MK Leo and T fought at Genesis 9, both Leo and T know who each other will play at the beginning of each game before their stage picks. There's no guesswork. They probably could have guessed who each other were going to play, but what if they were wrong and basically gave up a free game offer? That doesn't need to happen. Now we've seen how both forms of the rule set play out, let's look at the most common argument to see why character first isn't universal. Ultimate, as you may notice, has quite a large roster. 89 characters in fact. Pretty hard to stick to just one or two characters, right? The rule set helps with this. While not necessarily universal, you'll typically see a lot of players in stage first regions run three characters to cater for the rule set. Their main, a fundies character to counterpick after losing, and a character used for stage specific counterpicks like Kazuya on FD or Mario on Yoshi's. This feeds back into what we've discussed. Should the rule set cater to those who play one, or multiple characters. The thing is, regardless of stage or character first, the rule set still caters to both solo and multi mains. It just becomes a case of do you need to hide info from your opponent about your counter picks to be able to win? That doesn't exactly seem in the spirit of the game. On character first, you can still force these checkmate scenarios on counter picks, particularly when it's a decisive game like game three in a best of three or game five in a best of five. The argument of being rewarded for playing multiple characters is flimsy as it becomes a veil for wanting to counterpick without giving the opponent the information that a counterpick is coming. Surely it speaks more to the player that they can't clinch wins on counterpicks without the need to gimmick or deceive their opponent. So what's the future of rule sets? While regions like my own have been running character first since early 2021, and even more major regions like Europe and Japan have adopted them, North America is slow to pick up. Some majors and super majors have made use of character first, and it definitely has impacted the co-mains who use stage first as a crutch, but more so is tightening down on sets where players gimmick their way to wins. This is definitely a nice solution to one of the meta's biggest issues. Yes, ultimate is a counter pickers and co-mains game, but that doesn't mean you have to construct a rule set which lets you obfuscate the fact that you have a counter pick hiding in the wings. This is a game where knowledge is vital to keep growing as a player, with how much is needed to be known to succeed, and character first is definitely a rule set change, which helps with this. Hope to see more big name mages in the future make use of character first, as we get to see what true reward for playing either one or multiple characters is. Take care everyone, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.